Okay, uh, welcome back. Right, we are the fifth uh, point. The fifth reason is looking at uh, why ministering in healing and deliverance is important, right? There are eight biblical reasons, and we are on the fifth one. And the fifth point says the importance Jesus gave to miracles. Uh, now, this we are going to look in more detail of this particular point in chapter 3 okay the the chapter 3 is titled the father's works <clears throat> so we'll look at, at that in detail but then uh, we'll go through just of it so we read john chapter 5 verse 31 to 36 in the previous session isn't it we closed uh, the session with that <clears throat> so what was happening in the chapter what was jesus saying any idea John chapter 5, verse 31 to 36. So he starts off by saying, I alone don't bear witness about myself. Right? There's someone else very even John who was sent to you, who came to you as a witness, it, even his is not as important as what I'm going to do, right? It, he concludes that by saying in verse 36. But the testimony that I have is greater than that of John. What was John's message? Repent for the kingdom of God is near. Isn't it? That was his message, that he was one of God's witness. And everybody recognized that. He went around baptizing people in the water, right? Uh, we also know that Jesus himself went to him to be baptized in the water. And John the Baptist is also the one... Uh, who says that, okay, I baptize you in water, but he comes after me who will baptize you with fire and spirit, right? Isn't it? So, and then Jesus comes into the scene and he says, okay, so he is great and his witness is amazing. He bears witness of me, basically, right? Uh, but then he says, but the witness, the testimony that I have is greater than that of John. Okay, again, we use a lot of these words because it's in the Bible and it's very easy for us to skip. It, this One of those words is called testimony. Okay, so uh, what is a testimony? I'm not talking about the time in church we give people to come and share your testimony. It's like, okay, who has testimony? Please come. You know, I got a raise, pastor. I got this, I got that, I got the seat and all that. That is all great. But, but truly, what is testimony stand for? Where, where do you see uh, the importance of testimony given? In the courtroom, yes. Okay, so, <laughs> sorry Joseph, I'm going to keep taking your example because it's right in front of me. <laughs> right, so Joseph has been accused of something, theft. He stole something. This example, okay Joseph. And so you're in one side of the court, you know all the court scene, you know that happens. But on the other side is the witness. Isn't it? I bear testimony of Joseph. I am going to say, no, he didn't do it. That's the testimony. Isn't it? Now in Revelation, we see what is the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. We've complicated the prophetic a lot, but prophetic is very simple. Prophecy is what? The testimony of Jesus. When you declare what Jesus has done, what he did, you're testifying about it. It's as simple as that. Okay, and so Jesus is now saying here that the testimony that I have is greater than that of John for, this is verse 36, and now he's, Jesus is pointing to the works. He's saying, for the works that the Father has given me to accomplish, the very works that I am doing. What did he do? Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. Okay, so Jesus is pointing to the works, to the miracles, signs and wonders that he was doing as more important. So he's giving some significant importance here to what he was doing. Okay, let's move on uh, because we can dwell into this in the next, in the third chapter. Uh, when Jesus, uh, sorry, when Jews questioned him about being the Messiah, once again, Jesus pointed it 
to the scriptures, to the miracles uh, that he was doing. So let's look at John chapter 10 very quickly. John chapter 10, 24, 25, and 37 and 38. Okay, so let's look at it. So the time comes, you know, we just saw that uh, miracles uh, get people's attention. Good attention, bad attention. Here some bad attention has come. <laughs> uh, right, so John chapter 10, verse 24, 25. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Verse 25. Jesus answered them, I told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. So what Jesus is saying is that my Christship, my Sonship, who I am, my identity, that I am the Son of God, is seen and shown and displayed and demonstrated and manifested in the works that I am doing. What is the works? Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, etc. Yep. Are you all with me? So Jesus gave significant importance to the ministry of healing and deliverance. Okay, let's move on. The sixth reason is the kingdom comes with power. Kingdom comes with power. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, I need the board if you don't mind. So, Kingdom is two different words. Right? King and the second word is dominion. Okay, thank you so much, Abhi. So, so kingdom is two different words. King, dominion. Okay, so when we say that this is what kingdom is. So every time a king comes, he never comes without his dominion. His dominion kind of comes with him. Right? His authority, uh, his power, everything comes. And so when kingdom comes, the king, you know, the king is there. That, that, that's what it means. Are you with me? Right? So A little bit about spiritual warfare very quickly and we'll move on okay spiritual warfare why i'm saying that is because there are two kingdoms at war right now there are two kingdoms at war what are the kingdoms kingdom of god and kingdom of satan yes thank you okay there's no don't <laughs> okay the kingdom of god and the kingdom of the devil that's what it is okay there are two kingdoms at conflict okay um uh, I'm not going to use India as an example because everything will become very controversial right now. So, so let me just go very far out and say Australia. <laughs> okay, uh, Australia and let's say let's say New Zealand. Okay, sorry guys, New Zealand, Australia. I have nothing personal against you. <laughs> I love you guys. Okay, so the country of Australia and the country of New Zealand. Let's say, for example, and I uh, I pray to God that it never happens. Uh, let's say they are at war. Okay, they are at war. They are two different kingdoms at war. Okay, and so as soon as the two different countries are at war, that whole country, the whole country is declared to be in a state of war. The whole country of Australia is declared to be in a state of war. Now, it doesn't matter that if you are an Australian and if you are not in an in the army of you know in the Australian army, it doesn't matter if you are in the army. If you are born in Australia, if you identify yourself as an Australian, that means you are at war. Understood? You don't have to be in the army, a soldier carrying the gun, nothing. Just because there are two kingdoms at war and it's, this country has been declared as the state in state of war. You can just be a normal, usual citizen, common citizen, common man, woman, 
but you're at war. Why I'm saying all of this is as soon as you say that you are a believer of Lord Jesus Christ, you're part of a kingdom that is in a state of war with the other kingdom of the devil. That means you are at war. Okay, we just can't sit back, relax, and enjoy the service, you know. We have to wake up to the reality that we are at, um, at war, okay? So uh, let's look at what Jesus had to teach about it. So Jesus came and he introduced, uh, you know, he's introducing in, in his ministry that he preached the gospel of the kingdom. In Matthew chapter 4, or 17, Matthew chapter 4, my, the whole chapter of Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 4, so he's preaching the gospel, he's talking about the kingdom of God, and then in doing so, he healed the sick, cast out devils, and he worked miracles. Okay, so when the kingdom of God invades, everything beautiful, everything wonderful, everything powerful is in the kingdom of God. Right? Um, in Revelation, it says, There will come a day and a time where there is no sorrows, no shame, no pain, no tear when we are with him. Isn't that's what his kingdom is? is all about isn't it do you remember this very old song it says and it's from the scriptures righteousness peace joy in the holy ghost no it's a very old song righteousness peace and joy in the holy ghost that's the kingdom of god don't you want to be a part of the kingdom okay <laughs> so righteousness peace and joy the whole world is fighting for peace at the moment isn't it? Uh, so much of unrest. Um, joy is very different from happy. Joy is not the same as being happy. Happy is based on what is happening. Right? I'm happy because this is happening in my life right now. Something nice is happening. Something good is happening, so I'm happy. But joy is, joy is, you know, is it beautiful. It's divine. So righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, that's the kingdom of God. Everything beautiful is in the kingdom of God. And Jesus is saying, preach. He went about preaching about the kingdom of God, a kingdom that is full of righteousness, a kingdom that is full of peace, a kingdom that is full of joy. Full. Remember what full is, right? Means so It's a kingdom that's overflowing with righteousness, overflowing with joy, overflowing with peace, abundance of it all. Right, so Jesus proclaimed. Uh, he is sending out the disciples. First, he sent twelve disciples. Then he sent seventy of them. He commissioned them go preach about the kingdom of God. And how he said, go preach. And then he says, heal the sick, <laughs> cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. So the kingdom comes with power. And so that's where, again, prayer comes into the picture. Is prayer is not. Uh, Like, you know, begging. It's, it's an invitation. When we pray, Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. And, and the king, you know, when the kingdom comes, the king and his dominion comes. Right? And we say, Lord, come and invade our hearts. Invasion, right? If invasion is what? You don't. You ent New Zealand enters Australia when they want to invade. Okay, this is a very important word. Invade. They are not going to come and say hi, good morning, how's it going? Can we, you know, come and take over your land? You know, Britishers didn't do that to India. Okay, it's two hundred years ago, right? Um, they just invaded. Yeah. Okay, so conquered, so to speak. So when we ask God, when we pray, say, Lord, let your kingdom invade, come with power, right? And let your and when we say that, when a person is healed, the scripture says here. So where is that? In um, Matthew chapter twelve, verse twenty-eight, it's a beautiful verse. Matthew twelve twenty-eight. It says, "If I cast out demons by the Spirit of God." What is that? Deliverance is happening, all right? If I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. That is Matthew 12, 28.
Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. If I cast out demons, that means if I've set you free, if I've delivered you, that means the kingdom of God has come upon you. And so when we say the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, there's a lot of things that's happening. Good things. Okay. All right. Let's move on. <laughs> Let us move on. Um, let's go on to page number 20 in your textbook to the seventh point. Uh, the gospel is to be preached with accompanying signs. Gospel is to be preached with accompanying signs. Page 13 in your PDFs. Oh, wait. I hope it's page 13. Yeah. All right, guys, just another disclaimer, a reminder that uh, as we are using, um, you know, the the publication of uh, Ministering Healing and Deliverance uh, as a course content material. Um, so that doesn't mean I'm going to be going page by page for some most of the times I will do that, but there will and I will also be skipping a lot of pages. So, you know, if I feel that the content is uh, not, not, it's not, not necessary, <laughs> everything is important. But um, but I, I will be skipping pages, okay, and points. So don't think like, oh, how can you skip this one? Okay, just trust me. <laughs> All right, uh, point seven. Uh, the gospel is to be preached with accompanying signs. Uh, John three verse one and two. There was a man of the Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. So see the connection between teacher and signs. Right? Jesus was preaching, teaching, and whatever he preached and taught was accompanied with signs and wonders. He just didn't preach, he just didn't teach. Okay. Uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 22. Acts 2 verse 22, uh, men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did through him in your midst, as you yourself also saw. Our ministry at this point in a nutshell is that your preaching, that's great. You're called to be an evangelist, that is awesome. You're called to be a pastor, amazing. Right? You're called to be a missionary, wonderful. While you preach, while you teach, let your ministry be accompanied with signs and wonders. Are you with me? Right. In the next section, we are going to address this point as to why we don't move in signs and wonders. Um, you know, one of the reasons is that we've left it all out to just a few people. Okay. Oh, I don't have to do in this. That pastor will take care of that. We'll get to that point. Okay. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, so the gospel is to be preached with accompanying signs. And finally, the, the eighth biblical reason as to why ministering healing and deliverance is important is miracles encourage people to believe for more of the supernatural. It encourages people to believe for more of the supernatural. Okay, so every time people heard from different cities about what Jesus was doing, they wanted to come, right? Got their attention, they wanted to come and be healed. Uh, Matthew 12, 15. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew from there and great multitudes followed him and he healed them all. Matthew 15, verse 30. Then great multitudes came to him having having with them the lame, blind, mute, maimed, and many others, and they laid them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them all. Matthew 19, chapter, uh, chapter 19, verse 2, And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. 
It's amazing, verse after verse after verse, not a single verse it says he prayed for them. It just says he healed them. That means there was no bad report. Not a single person who went back, who came to Jesus and went back saying they were not healed. It says the language word used there is multitudes. We don't know even know the exact number. Multitudes came and he healed them all like a boss. He is the boss. So <laughs> isn't it? So the final point for us to remember is that uh, miracles encourage people to believe in God. Right? Uh, I know of so many of, of my friends from a different background, different faith, a different worldview, who accepted Jesus because someone in their family was healed. Because someone was in their family was healed, they believed. Yeah, there's so many stories like that. Okay, so you want to very quickly go through the eight uh, biblical reasons as to why this is important? Very quickly. First one is what? Miracles, healing, and deliverance. First one, reveal the reality and the nature of God. Second one, miracles reveal God's greatness. Miracles demonstrate God's compassion. Miracles have a powerful effect on people, especially on those who do not believe. The importance Jesus gave to miracles, the kingdom comes with power, and the gospel is to be preached with accompanying signs. Okay? And so here's the thing. So this is God's desire, is that John chapter 14, verse 12. Don't forget that. Okay? You would do these things that I'm doing, and greater things than these. That means every believer can do this. Every believer can do do this okay uh, and during the time Jesus's time here on earth he was fully God fully man yes that means he was in his identity he was the son of God and when we say that he was fully man that means he was in his earthly form he was not omnipresent he had to be limited to to be in one place Yes, and uh, he was not om uh, omnipotent. Uh, it means all powerful. Uh, he grew. He was hungry. He was thirsty. We see that, right? Uh, we look at the scripture. So, <clears throat> so he was not omnipotent. That means there were times that he was tired. He had to rest. He had to sleep. He slept on the boat and he slept. Right? He ate. Uh, had some barbecue sessions with his disciples. Right? Uh, he was not omnipresent. That means. He traveled on foot, used the donkey to move from one place to another, right? So, and then he was not omniscient. Omniscient is what? All-knowing. Bible says that he grew in wisdom. <clears throat> okay, so he was not omnipresent. He was not omnipotent. He was not omniscient. It's very important that he was fully God in his identity, but he was fully man in how he experienced and did life. Just like you and me, he got tired. Just like, you know, as he, he grew in wisdom as means, now you know a lot more than what you knew in your first standard, isn't it? Yes or no? Wherever you are in life right now, I'm sure you know a little bit more than what you knew in your first standard, no? Yes or no? So you grew in wisdom and knowledge and understanding, isn't it? Yes. Uh, and very similarly, Jesus grew in wisdom. Uh, scriptures says that in uh, in Luke chapter twenty, uh, Luke chapter two, verse forty-six and fifty-two. You can write down Luke. Uh, and all of this is in the notes, by the way, um, uh, for you. So this is simply to emphasize that everything what Jesus did. Okay, everything what, what Jesus did, he did it with the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, and so, and the same Holy Spirit has been made available to each one of us. Same Holy Spirit. The same Spirit that, that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of me. We're seeing that, right? Okay, um, so that's one thing. Uh, and the second thing is that sonship glory has been given to every believer. 
Everybody say sonship. Sonship. Okay. Sonship glory has been given to all believers. Okay. Um, so what does that mean? Glory. Okay. Glory in in Greek means doxa. D O X A. Okay. Uh, glory in the in the Greek word means doxa. It means to manifest, to demonstrate. Okay, so Jesus moved with the power of the Holy Spirit and in the identity as the Son of God. The same Holy Spirit that moved with Jesus is available for you and for me, right? And the same sonship glory has been made available to you and for me. Where does it say? Let's go to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. Look at verse 5. Okay. Hey guys, how are you doing online? All good? I, I have not forgotten you. Okay, John chapter 17 verse 5 says, And now, O Father, glorify me together with me, uh, glorify me together with yourself. Glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. And look at the next verse, verse 22. We're going to come down a little bit. Verse 22. It says, And the glory which you gave me. Right? And the glory which you gave me, I have given them. Who's the them? The believers. That's you and me. <laughs> right? He's talking about the same sonship glory, this identity. It's okay. I hope we realize what we've been given. I hope you and me realize. Just realize. Take time, 10 seconds at least, to realize. Are you telling me that I have the same Holy Spirit that Jesus moved in? I mean, that is quite deep. Yeah, that, that is. And this is Jesus, it's not even another disciple making this prayer. He's saying, the same glory which you gave me, <laughs> I have given them. It's amazing, isn't it? So, uh, every the sonship glory has been given to all believers, to all believers, and that's powerful. Okay, so we know all of these things. We have all these things. We we understand that uh, you know he still does. We understand that Jesus is still a Jehovah Rapha. We understand that he's a savior. He's a healer. By his stripes we are healed. Uh, we understand theoretically that okay, healing, ministering healing and deliverance reveal the nature of God. Ministering healing and deliverance reveal that, you know shows that God is compassionate. It shows his greatness. Uh, uh, it shows it does all of these things then why don't we still not move in healing and deliverance? Why are we not demonstrating the power, more of God's power? Is there more? Is there more that we can move in to all the churches? Sorry? Yeah. Yeah. So now I'm in page 28 in your textbook. Why are we not demonstrating more of God's power? We are going to look at a few reasons. So some of the reasons that's listed out in this section is One moment. About bottom of page 18 in the PDF. See, I have not forgotten you, for I have carved. No. 
Okay. One of the reasons, first of all, for the first reason is lack of knowledge. Why are we not demonstrating more of God's power? Lack of knowledge. So Isaiah chapter 13, um, it says, that, Therefore my people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, a, it says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So lack of knowledge of God, that means what? We don't know enough about we don't know enough about God. We don't know that He's our Father who wants to heal us. Right? Sometimes we make statements like, you know, I think I am sick because God wants me, God is trying to teach me something. Have you come across people like that? I think I am going through this. I'm I'm having this sickness in my life because God wants to teach me something. And same people will go meet the doctor also because they want to get better. So if God is trying to teach you something, and if you believe that, why do you want to get better by going to the doctor? Okay, so what's happening there? Lack of knowledge. Okay, a lack of knowledge is what led people into captivity. What is captivity? That means New Zealand came and captured people of Australia. Now the people of Australia are in captivity. Okay, uh, not... I mean, they are in chains, they are in bondage. People of Israel were in bondage and slavery. They were in captivity for 400 years by the Egyptians, isn't it? Uh, that means they had no freedom. They could not make a decision for themselves. So if you are anybody who is in captive, you do not have freedom. You don't have a right to make a decision for yourself. Okay? So now... In the physical, we may not be in captivity, but in the spiritual, we might be un uh, under the oppression. You know, we can go through certain phases and seasons in life uh, where we've given uh, authority to the to the devil, and for whatever reason, and he's held you captive to a certain practice or addiction or whatever it is, and you feel oppressed by it. Uh, why again you believe you continue to be, be oppressed because you don't know that Jesus can set you free lack of knowledge right so one of the reasons why we are not moving or demonstrating more of God's power number one is lack of knowledge second reason is wrong teaching concerning the supernatural wrong teaching okay one simple point is that most of them there are teachings that goes on to say that healings has been stopped when the last apostle John died That's when everything stopped. So, uh, you know, we uh, there's teachings on what is called as a cessationism, uh, etc. Right? Uh, Bible is uh, Bible times is not for it's not for today. They did not have medical help back then, so that's why signs, healings, and wonders happened. So now we have all the medical help, so we don't need it. Right? <laughs> uh, it only happens according to God's sovereign will, so we cannot do much with our faith. The supernatural will make you spooky. Stay away if, if you want to be normal. So all these kinds of wrong teachings, uh, you know, has stopped the church from demonstrating more of God's power. Okay, that's the second point. And the third point, uh, what we looked at a little while ago, is leaving the miracle ministry reserved for an elite few. Okay, wrong guys, wrong, 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 wrong. Every believer can do this. Amen? Every believer can do this? Right? So you don't just leave the responsibility only to the senior pastor. Okay, only senior pastor can move in this thing. Only the missionary, only the evangelist, uh, you know, and so and so. No. Every believer, whoever believes, you've been given the sonship glory, you have the same Holy Spirit. So what are you waiting for? Okay. Um, that's another reason why uh, there is not enough demonstration of the power of God being displayed. Um, number four, replacing the supernatural with the modern substitute. <laughs> Sanjay, I see your point. <laughs> so, okay. Um, replacing the supernatural with modern substitutes. So, uh, what is modern substitutes? Good music, lights, 
bigger stages, bigger auditoriums. All of that is good. Good music, very important. Trust me. Okay, uh, good music is very important. Uh, good programs, uh, you know, um, equipments, all of that is very important. Uh, and but that cannot be substituted with the power of God, right? And then also there is apologetics. Uh, there is a subject called apologetics for you guys or second years? I, I'm not sure. Second years, okay. Um, so apologetics without power uh, is not going to be very effective. Okay. So replacing the supernatural with modern substitutes, unwilling to press in till we see more of his power displayed. Unwilling to press in. That means just getting a little bit more desperate for God. Okay. Um, I'm going to find you. I'm, I want to find you. I want more of you. I want to be filled uh, with you. Right? I want more of you. So um, Matthew eleven twelve, the scripture that says, uh, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. So he's simply saying that uh, there are not people who are hungry enough uh, for more of God. Okay. Uh, I see Warren, I see your hands raised. Do you want to ask a question or something? Yeah, if you don't mind, can I just ask you something? Sure. Uh, you know, when we, we the, the point that you made, leaving uh, sorry, leaving the miracle ministry reserved for an elite few, uh, but doesn't it also say in 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 the Bible that you know there, there are there are people who are being given specific ministries for like prophesying and for things like that? Yes, I hear you saying. Yeah, sorry, I, I was on mute. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Warren. So, thank you for the question. Um, so, I, yeah, you are referring to the scriptures in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter four, I, I think twenty-three, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, when you look at the scripture, uh, it so it says, you know, to the church, he gave some to be prophets, teachers, pastors, um, etc. And then it goes on to say, they were given to the church for the equipping of the saints, so the saints can do the work of the kingdom. Okay, so when you look at that verse, so here's the thing, right? We looked at, from, from the first session, uh, we looked at that Jesus preached, isn't it? That he taught. So in preaching and in teaching, he also did signs and wonders. And so what we look at the word and what is consistent with the word is that in any ministry that you are called for, so, I mean, you might have a heart for a children ministry or youth ministry or teenagers or worship ministry, whatever, right? Um, all of that ministry is still the work of God, isn't it? It's not a different Jesus in youth ministry. It's not a different Jesus in children's ministry. It is all the same Jesus that we preach and teach, isn't it? And so, um, and while we do that, uh, you know, we we are still uh, encouraged to move in power, to demonstrate, you know, uh, healing signs and wonders. So um, that is what I believe in. And, uh, and because, as in for me, my, the standard is Jesus. Uh, so I, I, I don't know. I hope that answers your question. Yes, it does. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for Okay, so uh, unwilling to press that was number five. Um, other roadblocks to the supernatural. Number six is um, not stepping out in faith. Uh, not stepping out in faith. So uh, again, remember we are in the section, why are we not demonstrating more of God's power? Uh, the sixth point states uh, other roadblocks or hindrances or challenges to the supernatural. One of them is not stepping out in risk. Okay, that's how I feel, spell uh, faith is risk, R-I-S-K. Uh, we are not willing to take the risk. Now, the reason can be anything, isn't it? It could be like because of your past experiences. You've prayed for someone and the person hasn't been healed. And so you give up. 
okay uh, or you've had some terrible experiences in the past and that is stopping you from pursuing to minister in healing and deliverance that's one of the roadblocks uh, I, I know of a testimony of a, a preacher a teacher and who also uh, who, uh, moves in the supernatural uh, and he's very well known I, I don't want to use the name um, He's very well known in the Christian circle among the healing ministry. He's very prominent. Uh, he does a lot of this street evangelism. And while even talking about Jesus on the streets, one of the ways he does it is by demonstrating the power of God. Uh, you know, incredible, uh, incredible stories. Uh, and it's all caught in life. And now he said that for him to see his first healing or miracle, uh, he had to pray for about 90 odd people. He had to pray for 90 odd people for him to see the first person being healed. A lot of people have been healed since then. But imagine if that person had stopped after praying for 10 people. I prayed for 10 people. It's not going to happen. I feel like giving up. Imagine if he had, let's say, if he had stopped as a 99th person. And his, you know, the person that was about to get healed was the hundred. Uh, the ministry itself would not have been born, isn't it? And so, uh, pressing in, believing that Jesus wants, uh, you know, to move the way uh, that He did, and uh, to just demonstrate who He is, and unveiling the goodness of our Father to the world is very crucial. Okay, um, you know what? I think uh, it, it's it's a good uh, time to stop here. Yeah. Um, it, it's been quite an uh, a lot of I think content uh, for the first day uh, of the subject. Um, but yeah, uh, any other questions for the, from those online? Uh, uh, Warren, thank you again for that question. Um, yeah, I, I really hope I answered that question. <laughs> uh, any anything else? It could vary, absolutely, yeah. The, yeah it, so not everybody has to wait for, yes. Yes, not everybody has to wait for 90 people to be prayed for and then see their first miracle and whatnot. The, the posture of the heart is, I want to keep pressing in. Lord, I know you've called me for this. Uh, I, know you, I know who you are. You moved in compassion. You healed everyone who came. Uh, and I believe in that. So the thing is, if there is an equation, A plus B equals, you know, it. And all of that, the equation is never wrong at his end, right? He, his covenant name doesn't change us. Just because one person did not get healed, Jehovah Rapha doesn't stop becoming Jehovah Rapha. He is still the Jehovah Rapha. He will remain to be the Jehovah Rapha for eternity. We got to sort out our end of the equation, right? You come, shut the door, seek him, find him, right? Um, yes. Okay, uh, I think that's about it then. Uh, well, thank you all for joining. Um, Pastor, do we have the gifts of the Holy Spirit before we start? The, do we have to have the gifts of the Holy Spirit before we start the ministry? Uh, n not necessarily, Gertrude. Um, this, again, my opinion, you don't need to have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's Each gift may be given to you in different season, different. So you don't need to have, you know, it's, it's something that you press in towards, push in towards. Um, so you don't ha need to have all of them at the start, I'm saying. It's important. You need to have them. <laughs> uh, but you don't have to wait. So all you have to do is step out in faith. Jesus has called us. So let's go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can we just stop this and I'll address this thing? Okay, yeah. All right, guys, see you again next week. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, Pastor.